big paw that middle this is probably very badly shaped it's almost cat paw looking anyway and then there's that line of fluff that comes like right down here and ends at this middle it's not necess really necessary but it gives the paw more depth I suppose that's what you'd say and there we have that final line so so the paw looks from the under view back view and depending on where exactly Seti is right now, if we're looking at a glass underneath him, then I guess it's the under view. We could just be behind him. Okay. Well, there's that. You can add more fluff lines, less fluff lines. And just really a matter of how you like it and what looks good. But there is a sketch of his back paw. His front paws I'm not going to draw because I said I wasn't going into hand paws. That's a whole nother realm on its own and even I'm not very good at them. I try when it comes to hand paws. Okay. This is going to bother me if I don't fix it up a little. Okay. There's that paw. And I need to fold it. That's two layers. I'm not very creative when it comes to paw position, so sorry. Who close city now? And we can do Ron next. Wait, no, we didn't do her. She has raccoon paws. We can actually are pretty close to rat paws when you look at it. We'll do her front paws with their claws out. Mm, our triangular trapezoid shape. I'm going to draw a circle where her dew claw would be since this particular pose requires her claws to be in a slightly different position. Slightly splay it out more, and then we've got really sharp claws. Claw cats have fluffy things right here. There's actually a piece that goes like this if you look at an actual cat's paw, but it's rather pointless to draw that since you won't see it anyway. Unless you're a realism artist, in which case you probably wouldn't be looking at this tutorial because I'm not drawing the most realistic paws ever. Claw. Okay. And this block claw actually does this, since it is a slightly different angle than all the other claws on her wrist, I guess you could say. That is her wrist. So her claws look like this. And there's a line right here. So it's just how sharp they are. We'll draw our bottom pop out a little fluff. This dew claw. There actually is a pop out here. Like I said, you don't usually see much of it from a side or front view, you more see back view. Okay, and this, you can also do this, it looks more like they're trying to push their claws out instead of normal fluffy kitty paws. So you know kitties have awesome paws. And there, uh, 
Okay, lovely computer, why are you doing that? There we go. And I just realized I did not save. Let me do that real quick. Not there, you stupid thing. Okay, now that we are not in danger of losing all that work we just did, there's a cat with claws out. And I've shown you earlier how Keanu's paws were, where his claws were out, even when his paw was slightly sideways. So I won't draw that. I guess I can draw it if you guys ask enough in the comments. And now we'll get to... I'm only going to do these paws from a side view since people tend not to have very many rat and hoofed characters as compared to um... yeah you know your mainstream wolf cat dogs I'm starting to talk to myself less so I guess that's a good thing We'll finish Raccoon. You can still start sort of with this trapezoid shape. It's slightly flatter since Raccoon's paws, when they stand on them, tend to do something like this. I used to have a picture of a raccoon on my computer. And right now I don't. I don't feel like going to the internet because, well, that's a waste of time. I may have a raccoon paw I did for her ref though um see I really don't know where I save anything anymore I probably should do some organization but I fail at organization that is the back paw of a raccoon yes they have five toes and the bottom of their feet are not furry just the top and sides. I will show you the basic shapes in that. I'm not going to redraw that because that took a bit longer than the rest of my paws. This is a... Um, I'm not really sure what you call this shape. You know, it kind of looks like a speedometer. See? Speedometer thing. That's kind of what that looks like. Then you've got the five toes up here. Heel. And lines that connect that. And there's always this line sort of there. I guess you could draw extra circles for where these are. They're like not really lined when you shade them, but it helps to place that. That's pretty much the base shape of a raccoon's bottom foot on the bottom. So, when we draw her feet, this is her back foot, because I told you I wasn't going to raccoon's front feet, I haven't drawn them before. Okay. Her paws will do sort of that. Raccoons have sharp claws. They're kind of small in most views, but they sort of do that curve. You don't want to do a really realistic thing. Do the curve and then a bump. They are relatively flat, and you probably best off drawing two, three, four, because the fifth one will probably be hidden from view in this angle, which you're safe doing, especially since most people don't seem to notice they actually have five, five toes on average. I mean, they draw them with five toes, but you can't really tell when you draw them. And if you want to draw fluffs, you draw them really low there. Paw pads 
way up here. And it's kind of one continuous pod looking thing. It's really unnecessary when you're drawing them in a cartoony style that you draw all that fluff there. But th that is a raccoon's paw. And now I will show you both the rat's front and back paws if I can remember how to draw a rat's paw. Rats have the same shape here. They also have this fluff, this really fluffy fluff right before their, you know, naked looking toes. Yeah, actually rats have fur there, but you generally can't see it. It's extremely short. So it's not really important to say they have hair, otherwise people draw really creepy looking rats with hairy hands. And rats do not have very hairy hands. Unless they're huge. They actually have four fingers as five fingers as well. And tablet is passing in. Okay. They do not have paw pet looking things, but you can shade them, so Rat's foot pretty much did the same thing as the raccoon. These are... Okay, this one's just awful, but... You get the basic gist of what I'm doing. And they do the same thing the raccoons does. I'm going to erase that, but... You understand what I said, you saw the raccoon. That I do not want to keep that there because that's really bad and I don't want people to actually draw after that. Okay, that's that. And now we're going to hoof feet. Because you know hooves are cool. He has split hooves. Hi Ron, you, 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 can, you can stop being shown to the public now. He has split hooves, as you can tell. He is a Kirin, which is mostly based off of a deer instead of a horse, as far as the unicorn is concerned. So, we are going to draw his hooves momentarily after I go check on something. Okay, there we go, and now we should be doing, oh yes, hooves. I'll draw a horse's hoof real quick so you can see, what's on this, oh okay. A horse's hoof, this is where that trapezoidy triangle shape really comes into play, because horses have this really weird anatomy where they walk on their toes, I mean their toenails, they do not walk on their toes like other animals you usually draw. So that's sort of they sort of do this when they walk. It's kind of hard to draw quickly, but it basically does that on a horse's hoof. And if I cover it with Frosty's hoof fur, since she is mostly Clydell, you won't see it. Because they have really long fur. My phone is vibrating again. Now, if short haired horse, you're actually going to have to draw that. And I'm not going into that because horses have really weird anatomy. I love Clyde Stills and those kinds of horses simply because they cover up most of that. 
and then they have this awesome hoof that does this. The bottom of a horse's hoof does that, and then has this line here. There's actually the hoof, sort of a rim thing, and yeah, and it sort of like that. And yeah, there, that's kind of the bottom of a horse's hoof. It's really hard to explain properly since I'm not a horse artist. Nor do I study horses as much as I should for having a horse character. And Frosty's feet are actually way longer than this, so... Anyway, back to the deer. And as you can tell, there's actually a lump right there. So, you've got our trapezoid shape. Actually, you're going to need two of these. Since we're drawing deer hooves. I guess you could start with one trapezoid shape. But I don't really want to start with one trapezoid shape because then I forget that they're cloven and we have all sorts of problems. And then there's this bump. And we have that bump there. You easily see that and then the other hooves. They usually have a little fluff going in between there. As far as deers go, they're a bit more streamlined. It depends on how you like drawing your hooves because, well, hooves kind of aren't the easiest thing to draw in most cases. Especially not split hooves. Yeah, that's basically where that cloven shape would come from. And then there's this little fluff. Actually, deer sometimes have this other, like, hoof doing that. That's good to know about. I'll shade it a little. Yeah, it looks sort of like that. Not all deer have that, I'm not sure exactly, but a lot of them do. So there's your basic deer hoof. And you could make it more streamlined and pointier, I suppose, that's what you say. Because I don't really know if that's pointy, but... Eh, your basic deer hoof. Well, I'm going to end this now. And thanks for watching. And maybe I'll do another tutorial if you guys are interested and probably stop talking to myself. Bye now.